I've had quite a few people ask for this video, so I'm going to put one out there, and that's how to use the flashback button on a motherboard to update your BIOS. In today's example, I have the Gigabyte B650 or Solite AX motherboard. Any motherboard that you're going to do with this process should be pretty well the same. You'll just have to check your manual to see what you need to rename your file to when you get it on your flash drive, and also which USB port to use on the back of your motherboard. To use the flashback feature a lot of people say this is a lot easier than what i show in my videos i don't know if it's true or not there will be a few things that you need for this process you will need the motherboard itself and you need it blank you don't need a cpu you don't need no ram you don't want no hard drives connected to it no m.2 M drives installed on it you want it blank like you would like it'd come out of the box is pretty much what you need you also need your power supply because you will have to put in your 24 pin and your CPU supplemental power to be able to get it flashed. And you will need a flash drive. I recommend about an eight gig flash drive. The file ain't that big, but a lot of people say that you can't format anything smaller than eight gig to a FAT32 format, which you will need to do. You will need to format that flash drive to a FAT32 format. That way your buyers can read it. You will also need a computer or a laptop or something that has the internet access to it to be able to download and set up your flash drive to be able to update the BIOS by using the flashback feature. Without wasting a lot more of your time, let me flip you over here. I'll show you how to get this BIOS downloaded and to set up this flash drive for this Gigabyte motherboard. All right, guys, here we are on my desktop. You need to get your flash drive set up to be able to get this to get this BIOS installed on your motherboard. All right guys, and to get the flash drive set up, I've already got my flash drive put in the back of my computer. I'm gonna go down here to my fire folder here, pull it up. My USB flash drive is drive E, as you can see right here. So you're gonna click on it. And you can see there's some stuff already in this folder, or on the flash drive. Well, I don't need this no more, so I'm not too concerned about it. When you format your flash drive to FAT32, it will erase anything that's on the flash drive. So you need to make sure that anything that's on the flash drive that you want to keep is put someplace else. Going to go down here to USB flash drive E. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go up to format. I'm going to do the full capacity. I'm going to make sure it is on FAT32 default. This is very important for your motherboard to be able to read it. It does have to be in FAT32. We're going to do a quick format and go ahead and start. It throws up a warning that it will erase everything on the on the flash drive by doing this. If you're comfortable with losing the data that's on there, you hit OK. Give it a second here. There we go. Format's complete. Now, since our flash drive is set up, if we pull it back up here, the flash drive should be completely empty. You really want to check and make sure it's formatted into FAT32. You right click it, go to our properties. Pull that up where you can see it. And right here on the general tab, it will show the file system as FAT32. All right, now we got this ready. Now we need the internet browser. We need an internet browser. I use Google Chrome. You can do this with anything that you want. Just start typing in the Motherboard that you got, which mine is the Gigabyte B650 or Elite AX, which comes up in my, in my history because I have already looked at it. Click on it. You want to go straight to the Gigabyte.com website. That way you're getting it straight from Gigabyte. And we need to go there. Okay, you want to use this support button down here. Don't want to use this one. If you use this top one up here, you will have to re-enter the motherboard. But since you're already on the web page for that motherboard, you go down to this support button here. Um, the OS, I'm, you can change that if you want. If you want it running Windows 10, Windows 11, whatever you're running, you may want to change that. Me, I usually leave that the same. You can tell up here it is the B650 or Elite AX. Make sure that matches exactly what's on your motherboard box. Make sure that matches if it's got Wi-Fi to it. Some of them will specify Wi-Fi. Some of them will specify something different. Just make sure this matches what your motherboard box says. That way you know you're getting the right BIOS. 
Then you scroll down here to where it says BIOSes. We have seven of them. Last time I updated the BIOS on this motherboard, I did update it to F3B. So we're going to go up to the newest one. Over here on the right hand side, it shows you what everything it fixes or what it potentially fixes or what it updates. Um, a lot of time you get like RAM compatibility updates, you'll get the ages updates, uh, chunk sum, check sum. You'll get that, you know, but over here it tells you. Over here also tells you if you need to update to one version of the BIOS before going to the latest, it will tell you what what steps you need to take to get up to the latest BIOS. I also get this question a lot in the comments. You know, can I go straight from one BIOS to the next? As long as there's no notes down here stating that you need to go from one BIOS to another BIOS, you can go straight to the latest BIOS. There is no compatibility issues or nothing like that. Nothing bad's going to happen to your system. Unless it states that you need to do, you know, sometimes you may have to update to F3 before updating to the latest one or whatever. It happens, especially as motherboards get older, more CPUs come out. Sometimes you'll have to update to a certain BIOS before you can do the latest one. Just something to keep in mind. But if there's no notes over here stating that you have to update to one before the next, you're good to go. You can update to the latest one. Uh, looks like we're going to do five, uh, F5A today. We're going to hit the download. And we're going to hit save. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to hit open. And this file is an extracted file or it is a zip folder. So you have to extract all these. We're going to go up here and hit the exact, uh, extract all. You want to go to the browse. You want to go to your flash drive. Hit select folder and hit extract. Normally at this point, this is all you need to do to set up your USB flash drive when you do it the old fashioned way like I normally show. But since we're using the flashback feature, there's another step to this. And here's all of the everything that got downloaded and unzipped you can see there's quite a few of them and this varies depending on your motherboard manufacturer like I know Asus motherboards when you get to this step there'll be a rename tool that you'll have to run that will, that will re rename this BIOS if your motherboard can read it but with the Gigabyte motherboard you have to manually rename this you want to pick this FSA file which is going to be the biggest file on the flash drive now. Going to right click, go down to rename. I'm going to get rid of everything in the box. And in the manual, I don't know if this is important or not, but in the manual, it has gigabit put in all caps. So we're going to type it in there. G I G A B Y T E. And like I said, the manual has that in all caps. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to hit period. Then you're going to put B I N in lowercase and lowercase. That's the way they got to put in the manual. So that's the way I'm going to do it on the zip drive. I'm going to hit enter. And when you do that, it says that if you change the file name extension, the file may become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? I'm going to hit yes. And there the file has been renamed. Well, hopefully the motherboard will recognize it and read it. Your USB is now set up with your BIOS on it. So now we need to flip over and actually show you how to put it into the motherboard, set up the motherboard, and actually get it done. So let me get reset up here and I'll be right back. All right, now since we got our little flash drive here set up for this, now we're going to put it into the motherboard and we're going to get the BIOS updated on it. As you can tell here by looking at the motherboard, we have no RAM, we have no CPU, we have nothing. There is no M.2 underneath the cover, there's nothing. You want it plain Jane as if you bought it new out of the box when you do this. On this particular motherboard, which is going to vary depending on the motherboard you got and the manufacturer of it, there's a certain USB port that you got to plug it into. On this motherboard here, you need to use this bottom one down here. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'll try to zoom in on it, but right here, it says something about BIOS flash or BIOS something right here. 
Most generally, most motherboards will have which USB port you need plugged into to be able to do this. And in the manual, it says to make sure you install your USB port before you put the power to the motherboard. So we're gonna go ahead and install the USB port here. Put the flash drive in there. Okay. Back here, I have a RM650 power supply by Corsair. All right, guys. We already put the flash drive in. I connected up the eight pin CPU power and we connected the 24 pin for the motherboard. And then there will be the only two plugins you need to put in. Okay, now with that being done, you reach over here and turn on your power supply. And you'll see the flash drive. Well, mine's got a light on, so mine lights up a little bit. So that you are getting power to it. And on this motherboard, it's a little bit recessed. But right over here is your flashback, or they Gigabyte calls it the Q, Q Flash Plus feature. Got a little button right here that's indented. And because it's indented, I'm using this little piece of wood to be able to push it. Now you take it, push it in. They say it should start flashing. There we go. There is a red light that came on on the motherboard on top. And the button, the it started flashing. Now you just wait until it quits flashing and the buyer should be updated. All right, the flash drive quit flashing and the little light over here quit flashing and the red power light back here on the motherboard is went off. So I'm assuming it's finished up. So let me get a CPU and some RAM put in this, get it hooked up to monitor. And we'll see if it was this, uh, we'll see if it actually worked or not. I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we go. I got it hooked up to a monitor using the integrated graphics. Got the keyboard and mouse, that way we can get into the BIOS. I don't know if you can tell or not. I did put some RAM in it. I got the 7600X underneath this, I don't know, Wraith self cooler from an AM4 build. It's what I had laying around. So I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal because it ain't going to be on long. Uh, we just need to check that buyer's version and see if it actually updated or not. Let's reach over here and we'll turn on the power supply. And it don't have a power button, so we will be crossing the pins. Fan spinning up. Go ahead and start tapping the delete key here. That way we can get into the BIOS. And just a reminder, we was on F3B, I believe, was the virus we was on. The one we put on the flash drive was F5A. So let's see if this thing actually uh, actually updated the virus or not. Um, it says, virus has been reset. Please reconfigure your buyer setup items if needed. Click OK. And all right, if we go up here at the very top left of the monitor up here, I think you can see that. Maybe I'll zoom in when I do the video editing to it. But it does say the virus version is F5A. And we was on F3B, I believe. So it did take it. So there you go. That is the way you use the flashback button. Let me get reset up here. I'll come up with, a, with some of the pros and cons of flashing your bios this way and my thoughts on it and if everybody's right by telling me it's easier to do it this way than the way i normally show you how to do it let me get reset up and then i'll come up with the conclusion to the video for you all right so i showed you how to go in and set up your flash drive how to download your bios how to rename it and all that good happy stuff on this motherboard i showed you how to physically update your bios i also showed you that it did actually take it this time and the bios did update i do like this system pretty well there is a couple pros to it there's quite a few cons as well some of the pros i really like about it is if you're in the middle of doing a bios update and you lose power which you could mess your motherboard up if you lose power while doing this as well this gives you a way to recover your motherboard without having to send it into the manufacturer which i think is a wonderful thing 
Number two pro of doing it this way, it can save you money. You don't have to buy an older CPU to be able to update, to be able to run the newer CPU that you really want to run in your system. That's a pretty good thing. To me, this flashback system is a just in case type of deal, if you ask me. Due to the two pros that I just mentioned, I think that's where it best comes into play. As far as the cons go, to being able to do this, Number one, you know, everybody told me that it was a quicker way of doing it. You know, that's what I've read in my comments a lot, that this is a quicker way of doing it. I don't believe it's much quicker this way than by the way I normally show you. Just with the simple fact you gotta go in and rename the file, you gotta look up the manual for your motherboard, because your motherboard ain't gonna come with the manual most likely, so you have to get one line, you gotta find it. Or you gotta look through a paper manual if it does come with your motherboard to figure out what you gotta rename that file to. It's just an extra step there that, you know, it was just really unnecessary if you don't have to do it. So I really don't care for that part of it, that, that aspect of it. Also, you have to have a computer or laptop that has internet access to be able to set up your flash drive. The way I normally show you, you can do it through the system that you're building. This way you have to have a laptop or a computer that has internet access to be able to set up a flash drive. You can't do it on the system that you're working on because you don't have a CPU, you don't have RAM, you don't have an operating system, you don't have access to the internet yet. So I think that's kind of a con. Another con is you don't know what BIOS version you're on. Now if you buy a brand new motherboard, if you buy a used one, you have no idea of what version of BIOS is on that motherboard. There's no way to tell unless you get it up and running, you get in that BIOS and see what it's on. And like I pointed out, when I show you how to set up your flash drive, some BIOS versions, as the motherboard gets older, you have to go up to a certain number of BIOS before you can go beyond that one. Some of the other motherboards, there's a small utility you have to run after you up update to that BIOS before you can go beyond. You can't do that if the system ain't up and running. So that may mess with you a little bit. Another con for it is, I know it's been out for a couple of years now, and I figure they got a lot of the bugs worked out of it. But a lot of people on the internet are saying that they've done it this way, and it just didn't work for them. It could have been a user error, you know, they could have not named it right, or something like that, or they may have downloaded the wrong BIOS for the motherboard they're trying to update. I'm not too sure on all of the different cases and whatnot, but there is a lot of people complaining that they tried using a flashback system on a motherboard and it just didn't work. And to me, it's a lot of hassle to go in and do all this and not know if it's going to actually work for you or not. That's some of the cons to it. I think I went in depth pretty good on this video to show you how to use this, which I basically do that with all my videos. But leave me a comment below if you think I missed out on something or you disagree with me thinking the way I think about this flashback system like to hear your comments, your feedback, and see what you think about the updating your BIOS this way. Me personally, I am a little old school. I'm still gonna do mine the old, old fashioned way. Cause I like knowing what my system's doing when I'm doing it. When you do it this way, you really don't know. You're just looking at a light blinking and hopefully it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. The other way it kind of tells you what it's doing at the time. I don't know. Like I said, I'm just a little old fashioned, I guess. There is some links in that description that may interest you. Don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff on your way down that description box. You all have a good day. And I'll see you in the next video or live stream.